Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel Studios Fantastic Four released new official imagery of Johnny Storm giving us our first look at the alternate reality version of 1960s New York that this film will be set in. That's right, the MCU Fantastic Four will apparently not be set in the primary MCU previously designated as a sacred timeline for the 616 universe according to Marvel Studios. No, it will take place in an entirely different universe with a 60s retro futurist design, as well as Julia Garner announced to be playing Shadow a ball silver surfer in this universe and marvel's website confirming reed richards future foundation will be part of this overall story as well and marvel studios is clearly doing this to set up an apocalyptic galactus ending for this alternate earth and an inevitable incursion event leading to the secret wars merging of these universes so in this video i'm going to break down everything we learned last week about this fantastic four film why marvel chose the specific list of fantastic four comic recommendations that it did and some pretty interesting visual clues you might have missed from this poster but first, big announcement! Since this Fantastic Four movie will be kind of a reset from the past Fantastic Four films, and elements from those past films could come back in Deadpool and Wolverine, and hell, probably Secret Wars too, New Rockstar's next rewatch series will be a Fantastic Four rewatch. 2005's Fantastic Four, 2007 Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer, and 2015's Fantastic Four by Josh Trank. We will not be doing the Roger Corman Fantastic Four, but you can find that in another video on this channel already. So those three movies, in-depth breakdowns of each of them coming to New Rockstar starting April 20th. Mark your calendars. Okay, so Thursday, April 4th was 4-4 day, and Marvel Studios celebrated it by releasing this new poster showing official art of Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, who will be played by Joseph Quinn in the Fantastic Four movie coming in 2025. And along with this poster, there is a link that took you to a page showing Herbie with a jokey 404 error code, but hidden on Herbie was a QR code that takes you to the real page from the Future Foundation, saying delegates were glad you could join us to prepare for the upcoming meeting, you've been granted access to read these issues on Marvel Unlimited. And the reading list includes Fantastic Four number one from 1961. This was the original Fantastic Four comic that really was the start of the Marvel Universe as we know it. This was our introduction to the team as they fight Mole Man, a subterranean monster eroding the ground beneath energy plants. But then Fantastic Four number 48, 49, and 50 from 1965 and 1966. This is the pivotal arc that introduces the Silver Surfer and Galactus. The Watcher arrives to Earth to warn the Fantastic Four by creating atmosphere disturbances that freak everyone out but just to cloak the planet, but Silver Surfer finds them anyway and alerts Galactus. And while Galactus assembles his world-devouring device aboard his giant ship of Ta-2, Reed is able to recover the ultimate nullifier from deep space, and he uses this weapon as kind of leverage for Galactus to just leave Earth alone. And then the fifth comic they recommended, Fantastic Four Life Story Number 1 from 2021. This is a more recent reimagining of Marvel's first family as people whose lives played out in real time throughout the 2000s. Now, the Future Foundation was an addition to Fantastic for lore from Jonathan Hickman in 2010. Jonathan Hickman, of course, the writer behind the Time Runs Out and Secret War storyline that Marvel Studios is now adapting. The Future Foundation is Reed Richards' philanthropic organization to better serve humanity's future. The initial young recruits include Zero G, Alex Power, Dragon Man, Evolved Moloids Tong, Turg, Mike, and Kor, and Bentley 23, who's a clone of the wizard, followed shortly by Artie Maddox, as well as a mutant leech, and then Reed's father, Nathaniel Richards, and Spider-Man, and several others over the years. But in the Secret Wars event, the Future Foundation is loaded onto Reed's lifeboat right as the incursion between Universe 616 and Universe 1610 starts to get really bad and the incursion causes a breach in the hull and these kids end up getting separated from Reed Richards and they die. Don't worry, they later get restored when the multiverse is fixed at the end of the Secret Wars event. But let's look closely at this new Johnny Storm poster because there is a lot here. If you look closely at the base of Johnny's flame on trail, the art is signed RM, which stands for Ryan Minor Ding, who is the head of Marvel Studios Visual Development. And he is probably the most important artist at Marvel Studios whom Kevin Feige has trusted to shape the look of the MCU and all the characters in it. So when art comes from Ryan, we can trust that this will be what it looks like in the film. And behind Johnny is the skyline of the alternate 1960s New York that this Fantastic Four movie will be set in. You can barely make out an Empire State Building, but its iconic edifice is overshadowed by more unusual shapes and designs that reflect the 60s retrofuturist designs that were popular in the 1950s and 1960s. What do we mean by that? Well, it basically means the optimistic world of tomorrow concepts that artists and architects and imagineers from these decades took originally from thinkers and artists like Jules Verne from the end of the previous century and mixed with post-World War II atomic age thinking and the consumer industrial boom of the 1950s and 1960s to create these bright, towering,
towering spires and swooping curved arches that connect everything. It's what Walt Disney's team used as inspiration for Tomorrowland and later for Epcot. It also inspired the look of the Jetsons. And when Brad Bird created Pixar's The Incredibles, which is pretty much just the Fantastic Four, you'll notice the world that they live in also kind of has this design. Really, it's a thematic counterpoint to the sci-fi aesthetic that became popular in the 70s and 80s with Star Wars, Alien, and Blade Runner that depicted a dirty, grimy, rainy, lived-in future or space societies with tech that's often malfunctioning, reflecting the political disillusionment and the economic depression from those decades. So if you look closely at this cityscape in the poster, nearly every building is topped with pointed spires. There's a triple-tiered monorail that orbits a city, and on the far left is one building with an antenna that reflects the strongest sunlight glare, and I wonder if that is meant to be the Baxter Building, because it is atop the Baxter Building where the Silver Surfer lands to send a beacon up to Galactus. In fact, we may be seeing that beacon there, and that's what that glare is. So to be clear, this universe is not the 838 universe from Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which had an alternate Fantastic Four with John Krasinski as Reed Richards as a member of the Illuminati. That universe had a very different architecture that fused greenery and flowing water with the modern glassy New York and a rainbow tinted sky with artificially timed rain clouds and pizza balls. That's not what this is. But I think we might actually see this reality or something that looks like it during the movie of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness if you're looking closely, specifically during that rapid fire multiverse montage with Doctor Strange and America tumbling through the multiverse. One of the later flybys takes them through a bright blue and white New York with angular architecture. At the time, it wasn't really specified what this was, but it does match the color scheme of this at least. Another detail I want to point out about this poster are the vertical lines on Johnny Storm's chest and legs. I believe these were added to Johnny's Fantastic Four suit to match Jack Kirby's Human Torch design. Adding those lines here is just kind of a nice little throwback to that original look. So again, we are looking at an alternate reality for the MCU Fantastic Four movie, which I think explains why this movie is using Shallow Falls Silver Surfer played by Julia Garner. I was stoked when I heard this casting news. Julia Garner is a terrific actress who is the best part of Netflix's Ozark series. If you want to stop me, you're going to have to f***ing kill me! Yeah, imagine that scream heralding Galactus. Now you may have seen though that Lakeith Stanfield responded to this casting news on social media saying that he thought he was gonna play the MCU Silver Surfer, but that post has since been deleted. And I honestly think he was in talks to play the Norrin Rad Silver Surfer in a future Marvel film and that Julia Garner will be playing Shia Ball from this alternate universe. But both of them could be cast as different Silver Surfers in different universes. We've reached peak subscription. I think I have somewhere around a gazillion myself, which is part of why I'm thrilled to let you know that you do not need to sign up for a subscription to try out Harry's! Harry's makes the absolute best razors and shaving products, and now with their new Shave and Suds bundle, you can try Harry's for yourself without a subscription. The bundle contains an orange Truman handle with two blades, an eight pack of blades, one free travel size body wash, and one free travel size exfoliating face wash. The Truman handle has an ergonomic no slip grip, which makes it super easy to control, plus the weight just feels good. Also, Harry's body wash smells great and lathers really well, and the exfoliating face wash kind of turned me into a face wash guy. It's got peppermint and eucalyptus, so your face feels cool. Plus, the natural exfoliants make my skin so smooth. The Shave and Suds bundle is available exclusively online for just $27. That's an 18% discount. Just click the link in the description and pick one up for yourself. But if you want just one piece of it, don't worry. Harry's is available at Target, Walmart, Costco, or wherever you do your shopping, and you can pick up the individual items there instead. Again, make sure you check out the Shave and Suds bundle through the link in the description and pick something up next time you're at your favorite store. Let me know what you get. So in the comics, Shia Ball comes from the same home world as Norrin Rad, the planet called Zen La, and both of them were at one point twin heralds of Galactus, and they ended up being lovers as well. In the 1968 Silver Surfer series, issue number three, we learned that Shia Ball had her memory wiped by <gasps> Mephisto! Yes, I'm not forcing Mephisto into this video. It actually was the very first appearance of Mephisto in Marvel Comics. Mephisto was originally a Silver Surfer villain before becoming a cosmic villain to the broader Marvel Universe. No, I do not expect Mephisto to appear in this film or to even be referenced. He's not necessary here. Like anytime I mention Mephisto in a video, I have to include a little disclaimer that I am not predicting him to appear in this particular title. But what I am saying is that Marvel is showing off this glittering retro futurist 1960s New York in this alternate reality 
reality and an alternate Silver Surfer to set up this universe to die. Like the way in our reality, our pristine worlds of tomorrow of the 1960s gave way to gloomy dystopias of the 70s, I think Marvel understands that psychologically, film audiences cannot tolerate a clean utopia as a home base for too long. Like deep in our brains, it just looks to sanitize. We know a utopia is just destined to collapse. And I think this alternate reality utopia in New York in the corner of this Human Torch poster is what Galactus is gonna eat. Nom 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 nom. Marvel would not have singled out three issues of the Galactus storyline and confirmed the casting of this movie's Silver Surfer, the Herald of Galactus, if Galactus wasn't going to be in the movie. Galactus is coming. It's happening. And this time, I think he's gonna win. We know from the Valentine's Day poster that this movie will be set in some 1963. But the problem with it being in the 60s of the MCU that we know, and Hector Navarro and I discussed this in a video that you should watch, was that people in the MCU would have remembered and mentioned the Fantastic Four and no one has spoken of them yet. Aside from Doctor Strange's joke and Multiverse of Madness that most people think doesn't count. Core to the identity of the Fantastic Four is their celebrity status. After a space flight hits them with the cosmic rays, Reed Richards feels guilt for his friend Ben Grimm, who unlike the other three, is left with a power impossible to hide under an average appearance. Ben Grimm grew up facing anti-Semitic bullying by the Yancey Street gang, so being a visual sore thumb is just especially hurtful. So Reed decides that all four of them should take on public personas with superhero monikers. So if the Fantastic Four were just forgotten by the public of the MCU, that would diminish the importance of this team. Now sure, I have speculated that the populace of the MCU might be just so overwhelmed with global crises over the decades to think about anything from the 60s, or that maybe people in the MCU do remember the Fantastic Four, the Fantastic Four just haven't come up yet in the conversation conversations that we've seen in the MCU so far. But I just think that for many viewers of these movies and TV shows, that would just be too unlikely for a group that famous. It was clear in MCU Phase 1 that Iron Man and Thor and Captain America and Hulk were like anomalistic to that world, that there was no one who preceded them that was of that status. And it seems like the MCU Fantastic Four wants to be true to the spirit of how they were introduced in the 60s, based on their appearances and all this concept art, and Evan Moss Bachrock even mentioning the Yancey Street Gang in a Jimmy Kimmel interview. Ben Grimm from Yancey Street. That's right, he's from Yancey Street. In the yeah. Lower East Side. Yeah. A yeah. sort of phonically similar to Delancey, but it's sort of an imaginary. Yeah, notice how he says sort of imaginary. Like he was hinting that the New York that his movie is set in is a reimagining of the reality that we know from the MCU. The MCU, of course, that was conceived to be a reflection of our world. And that reimagining, I think, was the solution Marvel Studios execs and the creative team of this movie came up with. Start fresh with a completely different reality where the Fantastic Four don't have to fit into the past MCU continuity yet, where they can truly shine as the biggest stars of this world World in a 60s retro futurist New York City that didn't look like our 60s or the 60s of the MCU, but does look like the world of tomorrow that was conceived by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in 1961. I sense that Marvel Studios will introduce this Fantastic Four by skipping their origin, or maybe just by flashing back to it in brief scenes, and show them already in the course of being celebrity superheroes in 1963 in this alternate reality retro futurist New York. Like we'll learn about other villains that they've thwarted over the years, including Mole Man, and then suddenly, the party's over. Silver Surfer Shalabal arrives, and maybe we even see a live action Jeffrey Wright watcher to warn them. And Galactus has come a knocking. Like, imagine this Fantastic Four movie ends with Galactus succeeding, and this 60s retro futurist New York on this alternate Earth is destroyed as the Fantastic Four escape through a rift with Herbie in tow, along with Reed and Susan's kids, Franklin and Valeria. The last thing this family sees is their home Earth with its illustrious skyscrapers and triple tiered monorail reduced into a life husk. We would be propelled into secret wars with the stakes on the scale of Thanos' snap. Now, would that rush the Fantastic Four into secret wars a bit too prematurely before we would get to know them as heroes dealing with their own local issues? Yeah, it probably would. But Marvel is working backwards with the Fantastic Four. They might feel like they just have to catch them up to the MCU that they've already built. And if the plan for secret wars is to follow it with a vast MCU reboot in a new reality with new characters in it, and some of the old characters mixed with other characters' mother franchises, we could follow that crossover event with just one big shared universe with this Fantastic Four, along with other Silver Surfers like Lakeith Stanfield 1, as well as Doctor Doom, and then the Avengers, the X-Men, all the other Marvel heroes, and just a new present day proper Marvel 616 universe with the Fantastic Four leading this new era of storytelling. And at this point, we could get our great Fantastic Four stories there on the other side of Secret Wars. At this point, the Earth that they live on would not have to look like our Earth the way the Infinity Saga did. It could finally 
finally contain comic book inspired landscapes and atmospheres and not feel like it's betraying anything that came before. That is what Marvel 616 should feel like. So that's why I think Marvel Studios is starting the Fantastic Four in an alternate reality because the reality that Marvel Studios has created in the MCU up until this point is just too restricted to allow the Fantastic Four to be who we know them to be. Also, this allows us to see how truly terrifying Galactus is. Wow, all that from one poster. I assume we'll get more posters and comic recommendations in the future to follow the first poster on Valentine's Day on February 14th. Perhaps the next one will be a Mother's Day one for Susan Storm on May 12th, followed by a Reed Richards one on Father's Day on June 16th. And then maybe a Ben Grimm poster sometime between July 16th and 24th, which was the week in 1969 of the Apollo 11 mission in which mankind first walked on the moon. The Valentine's Day poster showed Ben Grimm looking at a Life magazine from December 1963, and we saw a framed portrait of him wearing a NASA astronaut flight suit. And I'm wondering if Ben in this alternate universe was an astronaut who was part of that Apollo lunar landing crew. Hey, comment down below with your thoughts and theories. Follow me at EA Voss. Subscribe to all three channels in the New Rockstars Network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.